The antibody attracts two targets. The target is the malignant cell, it binds first to the malignant cell, and then the other part will engage with the T cell. And it's, and it's all manufactured that the antibody constructs are either targeting CD3, that's for the T cell specifically, or CD19, which will be on the malignant B cell. So are you using the T cells to help you kill the cancer? Absolutely. The T cell is actually the engager, is the effector cell in that situation. It's going to kill the leukemia cell under those circumstances. And your target CD19? It's CD19 positive. Now this uh, validates it for which cancers in particular? Well, it would start out with ALL, B precursor ALL, then to high-grade B cell lymphomas and also indolent lymphomas, being of B cell origin. Well, potentially a broad canvas, but you've right. been looking now, phase two, in acute lymphoblastic lymphoma. Leukemia. Acute, uh, mm -hmm. You've been looking in acute lymphoblastic leukemia, of course. Um, so what have you done? Well, we conducted a phase two trial two, a couple of years ago, explorative trial, and we saw response rates well above 50% in the small phase two trial. So now what we did is to do it in a multi-center, multinational trial, big, biggest uh, so far yet to be conducted phase two trial in ALL. Uh, and we now recruited 189 patients to ask a question, does blunitumab lead to, com to a complete response? Yes or no in these patient cohorts. Right, cohort. now this is a confirmatory study to prove <coughs> or otherwise an anti-leukemic effect. What did you find? We found that 43% of the patients actually reached a complete remission within two cycles of blunitumab therapy, which was the primary endpoint of the study. And also that 43% of these patients we could take to transplant roughly about half of them to allergenic transplantation which the potential of curing the patient indefinitely from the leukemia. Mm. So it is one way of bridging a patient into a transplant setting that can be the curative in that, in that situation. Right, so that's a bridge to the transplant but many of these patients are cured by chemotherapy aren't they? Well, Initially, about 50% of the patients will be cured by chemotherapy, but for the patient who relapses, and this is the patient population that we are targeting, there's actually the prognosis is very dismal. Uh, only about 25 to 30% will actually respond with polychemotherapy. A lot of them die on therapy, and not hardly anyone actually living beyond uh, two years. So what's the comparison between your drug blinatumumab and chemotherapy? Well, it's not a chemotherapy. It is immunotherapy. We don't use any chemotherapy agents, so the side effects are very different. Also, the amount of t time the patient spends in hospital. Chemotherapy, which means, usually induction chemotherapy, would mean the patient would be in hospital for weeks with severe neutropenia, severe infections to get through that period. And we lose about 10% of the patients due to infections in that situation. With blood, it's just very different. If the patient responds, he can actually get treatment at home continuous treatment at home and it is actually in his family so the quality of life is so much more enhanced in these patient populations. So are you going mostly for maintenance therapy or are you using it as a bridge to no, transplant? It, no, it's induction. It, what it is, a patient has full-blown relapse and this patient will then get blintumab to A, control the leukemia, B, put the patient in a better physical state, C, gain time to find a donor and then put him onto a transplant. And how hazardous is the allo transplant? Well, the allo transplant, well, in this protocol that we had now, we lost 10% of the patients on after getting a transplant after blood induced. But that is what we also see, also generally speaking, with leukemia. So it is not hazardous more or less than the standard transplant procedure that we do. So we do an induction chemotherapy and then going on to a transplant. What could the implications be for other B cell associated malignancy? Well, it is immunotherapy, it is attracting T cells, so it could be a new way, in addition to all other immunotherapies, to use the immune, immune system to attack the B cell malignancy and to get a backbone, perhaps, that is chemo-free. Right, well, it's a bit of a change then, and potentially of less toxicity, so is it toxicity that you're well, mostly pleased about? <clears throat> well, there is, there is some toxicity with this drug. Uh, what is very specific to blintumab, we do see neuro-adverse events. So that could be aphasia, it could be a tremor, it could be dizziness, but it also can be encephalopathia. But the good thing is that it is clinically resolvable within 48 hours with the onset of it. 
So none of our patients have permanent neuro damage so far in these 189 patients. What should doctors make of your findings released here at ASCO? Um, I think it is a paradigm change in the way we will be treating leukemia. Leukemia currently treated is absolutely toxic. Thinking about pediatric situation where about okay, 90% 90, 90 of the kids are maybe cured, but many of them will have de development defects. So down the road, you could envision, take out some of these toxic substances, substitute it with blue into a map, you will get a safer therapy for young children and adults. So that would be practice change in many ways. Mm. B, um, it also gives patients the possibility of getting treatment at home, leukemia treatment, anti-leukemia treatment at home, which is very effective, which you normally speaking only can do in hospital. So that is the two big messages mm. I would so like to put out What's here. the brief take home distillate of your findings here that people should remember then in a few words? Single agent activity of Blintomap close to 50%, leading to complete remission and potentially a shot at cure. And in the clinic soon, do you think? Well, um, it's difficult for me to speculate. I think there are currently a phase three trial running comparing Blintomap versus standard chemotherapy in relapsed refractory LL. So if this trial works out reaching the primary endpoint, that may lead to registration of the drug.